Okay, well, um, I'm joined today by my friend Dave. Hello, Hello. Dave. How are you? Hi. Who am I? I said, how are you? Oh, how am I? Yeah, I'm really good. I'm really good. A little bit, little bit done with lockdown, to be honest. But um, yeah, going to the Isle of Wight for a holiday soon. So it's a win-win. Very nice. Very nice. And you're, you're in your church now, aren't you? Um, I can see you've got a nice little set up there. Um, yeah. but, I, I know you pretty well. I know you and where you are based. But for those who don't, um, would you just fill us in? Yeah, so I've, I'm, I've been at St. James Muswell Hill Church in North London now for six years, um, beginning of August. And I'm overseeing the youth ministry here, so 10 to 18 year olds, telling them about Jesus and helping them to live lives worthy of him. Um, over the past three months with uh, the whole COVID-19 situation, I've been taking on some of the live stream and tech and our online presence side. So it's been very, very different. And my, my work has changed dramatically uh, over the past few months, but it's exciting, like it's a little bit of change. Hopefully we'll get someone in to take it over very soon. <laughs> Hand, hand that job over. Um, yeah. Brilliant. So Dave, we wanted to, to talk to you today um, a little bit about um, the idea of evangelism and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pose a question to you. Now I've got a lot of non-Christian friends and family and I've heard something along these lines from from some of them before. Um, I'd love to know how you'd respond to this question. Um, why can't Christians just keep their views to themselves? What, what do you have to say in response to that? Yeah, interesting. I've recently got into TikTok, right? Which uh, You really which have, what, haven't you? You're like all <laughs> over it now. <laughs> it's one of the up and coming social media platforms. And it's very clever how it works, actually. I've just been doing a bit of preaching, a bit of evangelism on it. And um, like telling people about Jesus. And, and recently, actually just last night, I hit 1,700 followers. Ooh. And uh, <laughs> thank you. But I was so excited about this that I just wanted to tell people. So I texted a few mates and was just like, I got 1,700 followers on TikTok. And they were like, congratulations, very sarcastically. Um, thing is, with that kind of news, someone else is going to respond in being excited for me. Um, and sometimes it can be a little bit like that with Christianity in that, that I tell someone, oh, this is amazing, this news. And they're like, they're excited for me because I'm, I'm excited by it and I'm, I'm, I believe it. But... It doesn't affect them. So there is something different about the Christian faith in that when, when I tell someone about it, because I'm genuinely excited about this message of the gospel, um, it, it's not just something for them to be excited about, but it's something for them to believe. So maybe, maybe more of a helpful example would be someone standing in the middle of a road or whatever, and I'm like, oh, I found a way that you can, you can avoid being killed by the bus that's about to hit you. And then the person's like, oh, that's so amazing. I'm so pleased for you. Like, brilliant news. Congratulations. A little bit like with me with my TikTok. Whereas actually the Christian gospel demands a response. So it requires people to be like, oh, yeah, I'm standing in a road. There's a bus coming. I need to believe this too for myself. Not only be excited for you about it, but to believe it for yourself. The reason I can't keep the gospel to myself is because it both excites me, but I believe it should excite someone else. I believe it, but I believe that other people should believe it too. Um, so I cannot possibly keep it to myself because it is the best news ever, <laughs> even better than 1,700 TikTok followers, even better than being rescued from the middle of a road from an oncoming bus and about to, to smack you down to the ground. Um, the gospel brings life and light and love and salvation to the lost. It will bring you eternity with God forever. What can be better than that? Literally, what can be better than that? Um... Yeah, and, and you, so you spoke about like the need to respond to the gospel message. Like it's not just yeah. something we hear and then sit on. Um, just for anyone who might be watching this, who maybe hears the term gospel or has heard Christians use that phrase before, but actually isn't really clear what that is. Can, can you just mm. explain that for us? Yeah, absolutely. The gospel is all about going from death to life. Um, that is in our, in our rebellion, both in the ways we, we, we fail in this world and in the ways that we rebel against God. Um, we, we deserve his judgment and that's right and that's fair because he's a just God. But God in his mercy, in, in his love, brings us from death to life in giving us Jesus. Jesus died and faced the judgment that we deserve and in return gave us his life, his perfect life and his eternal life. So... <laughs> 
to me, it's a no-brainer, right? Because uh, I want to live forever. <laughs> and I want relationship with the one who made me and who knows me. And I want to know how best to live life and what, what life should look like the way the creator intended. So the gospel is brilliant, all about death to life. And, and I guess going on from that, the call for the Christian, like I love the verse at the end of uh, Matthew 28, which, which just says like, um, I've got to remember it now. Therefore go into the world. This is a little bit of a paraphrase. Go into the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, teaching them to obey all I've commanded you, baptizing them in the name of the Father. Yeah, I've, t- I've said that, but teaching them and surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. The command for all Christians is to go and share this message. Um, and that applies to you and me because it's so exciting, because it's so brilliant. Death to life. Yeah. And, and that, I just want to pick up on that one thing you said that this is for all Christians, right? So like you and I both yeah. in churches, like we're employed to be involved in ministry, both in a word sense, in a like gathering people sense, like that, that's our job. However, it's the job of every Christian um, mm. to be a part of this work, isn't it? Like um, I always remember, so Dave and I used to work together. I trained for a bit at St. James, which is how we know each other. Um, and I remember thinking about evangelism in that year. Um, and sort of come into that understanding actually like working with young people a 15 year old girl is going to be much better place to tell her other 15 year old friends um yeah. about jesus than than i am than someone who they have no relationship with um and so yeah like it's for every christian isn't it whether we're employed by a church or not like whether we feel equipped to do it or not like god's god's promised us that he's gonna he's gonna yeah. equip us for that purpose yeah and the danger is that i think that we as christians we think you know the bible talks about the gift of evangelism i don't have that therefore i can check out or we think of like you're saying evangelism is only for those employed staff members of a church who should be doing this no this is a call for all christians um christians must share the gospel with people is it's ingrained in who we are and it should be absolutely 100 percent what we're about and if we're not about that there's, there's something not quite right Maybe we're not captivated with the message enough ourselves. Maybe we've lost a bit of that joy. Um, or maybe we just don't really believe it for ourselves. We don't really believe that the gospel, gospel can bring about change from death to life. Or we don't, <laughs> maybe we don't love our neighbours, our friends, our family as we should. Like we want them to succeed in life, succeed in life. But we don't want them to succeed for eternity and spend eternally not in hell, but in a new world with our God. Dave, thank you so much. Um, I wonder, just as we finish, would you would you pray? Would you pray over some of what we've spoken about? Sure. Thanks. Yeah, of course. Yeah, Father, we thank you so much for Jesus. Thank you that he stepped into this world to bring us from death to life. Thank you that he stopped the bus, smashing into us and allowed it to smash into him in our place. We praise you so much for him. Help us to be excited about that message. Help us to believe it and help us to act on it. We pray, Father, that we may be fearless and bold followers of Jesus who deny ourselves and take up our cross and follow him, especially in proclaiming his good news. Help us. We find it hard and we're, we're, we're scared and we're intimidated and we feel like there's people better than us. So please equip us with all we need. Thank you that you've given us your spirit who is more powerful than the spirit of this world. Thank you that he gives us all that we need um, to help us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Dave, thanks very much. Thanks, Anna. See ya. Bye-bye.